the only reason why I whisper is because we live, I am very close here to the border towards the next door neighbor and I am outside and it's like what Eckhart Tolle said, money can buy you distance to your next door neighbor and I totally agree with him. So because of that I'm gonna be talking quietly. That's the only reason, otherwise I would never make a whisper video, because I am anti-fats. <laughs> yeah. Making a foot massage video to encourage people to be good to their feet, <laughs> to massage other beings' feet, dogs, and horses and cats and rabbits and massage all of them gently and other people you know students at a university campus it's so easy to do you know you have a break in between classes you sit on the lawn and you just you, you can make a sign that says free foot massages and I'll bet you won't sit there alone for a long time. <laughs> there will be people coming very quickly and they will say, oh right on, I want a foot massage and you just give them one and you don't ask anything in return. Okay? <clears throat> and it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't have to be a hot chick or a hot guy, Prince Charming or Barbie doll. It doesn't have to be. It could be anyone. It's just love, friendship. And I want people to do this. That alone can help dramatically. You know, if you give someone with depression for example, an hour of a foot massage or leg massage each day, they will not need the medication anymore. I guarantee this to you because that's what I have experienced. <coughs> and also hot springs. We went to Sespe Hot Springs in the Las Padres National Forest went backpacking with our former dogs and I forgot my Prozac I was taking that at that time I'm drug free now and I was like oh my gosh I forgot <laughs> and so it turned out I didn't need it after all all I needed was hot springs and I was in those hot springs oh day long and all night and we were in the hot springs the dogs didn't go in they were running around the hot springs they really enjoyed it there and Paul and I we were looking in the sky in the night sky and those were the most beautiful moments in my whole life and I did not need medication anymore. <laughs> I got hot springs with heavy sulfur. It's very healing. Very healing. And I also did the steam bath in Mammoth. Went to that geothermal power plant in Mammoth, California. And you can go there and you can put your fold up camping chair up there. You can sit in there and you can sit right next to those hydrothermal vents where the steam hisses out and it comes out like and it breathes out amazing, amazing fumes of sulfur and it smells like a little bit like raw oil and a little bit like perfume and sulfur it's like a 
wonderful, wonderful healing scent. And you can sit there as long as you want to. And you can breathe that in. And that's what I really need right now because of my bronchitis and that wildfire smoke. I really need that for my lungs. <coughs> I'm still struggling. I'm still coughing a lot. But it's getting slowly better. I didn't take antibiotics. So those are all important, highly important healing modalities that I recommend to the whole world. It is so infinitely important. And touch, physical touch, gentle touch for animals and people is the most important thing there is. The most important. It's the healing. It's the touch. Love is the most important thing there is. Nothing is as important as true love and caring for another. Not last. People mistake this all the time. They think that when they see my name, Nikki Loves Dogs, they, they always immediately think that I'm talking about some kinky stuff. <clears throat> and it makes me sad because I see that people don't know what love is. They don't know it. They never, they probably never experienced it. And I feel terrible, terrible for those people. I had a rough start in my life too. I know what it's like not to be cuddled enough as an infant. I know. It's horrific. It's devastating. And that's why I'm saying to all people all the time. When you find an orphan animal, you have to cuddle that animal. And I don't care what some wildlife authority person says. I, I do not care. I would risk my life to cuddle and save a baby animal. You know, if I am confronted with some with some by-the-book authority person who has no idea what love is. They'll have excuses like, or oh, the animal will not be um, adapting to the wild if you cuddle the animals. This is totally wrong. And, and even if the animal was too trusting after having been cuddled by humans, even if that's the case, even if an animal is going back to the wild and then coming up peacefully to a hunter and the hunter, first of all, that would, some hunters still have some, some, some kindness somewhere, some of them, and they would probably not shoot the animal, would probably help the animal, okay, if an animal came up to them friendly like I've seen it on YouTube already, yeah. but there are maybe hunters who will take advantage and just shoot the animal, no matter how tame, no matter how friendly. Those people exist too. They're, they're, those, are, those are the people that are dead inside, and I feel terribly sorry for those people. They come from the stream of sorrow. They have been abused. They have been neglected themselves. They don't know what love is. have no idea. They think love is sex. So my message to the world is if you find an orphaned animal, you have to cuddle that animal. Okay? And even if the animal gets shot by a hunter, that is a quick death. That is, a, that is still better than a wildlife station 
wildlife experts and quotation marks depleting an orphaned animal from receiving touch and love. That is the worst thing that can ever happen to any living being to not receive touch and love. This is 100% true what I'm telling you. You know, science have, has proven this. Science that was not necessary. Highly unethical science. Scientists, scientific studies that have been conducted <coughs> that have also proven this again and again and again. It is the most cruel thing in the world to not give touch to an orphaned animal, an orphaned baby of any kind of species. Any kind of any mammal, many other groups of animals, including humans. It's the worst thing that can happen. It's much worse than death for a baby animal to be abandoned and not touched. Sea otters in near San Francisco, they die when they're orphaned. They cannot survive. The immune system shuts down if they are not touched. Baby otters, they evolve to be held by their mothers on the mother's bellies. So the only way those sea otters actually survive in those rescue centers, for example, Monterey Bay, is when volunteer people have those baby otters on their bellies when they sleep at night in actually in water beds <laughs> in order to mimic the <coughs> the movements of the water they used to this you know the calming movement of of the water <coughs> water filled mattresses and they they're lying with them sleeping with them every night with those orphaned sea otters and that that should speak very loud and clearly to us okay they're very sensitive so they they do not make it if they don't get touched and but this applies to all mammals some of them may not die but they may become drug addicts later on they may become suicidal mentally ill, depressed, scared, scared animals, scared dogs, maybe bite, maybe have terrible fears and have to live like this for the rest of their lives. So this is my message to the world. We need to become very crystal clear about this about the needs that we have, the needs that our skin has. This is very, very, very infinitely important, this message. I know this video is kind of weird and awkward and all of this. And I always feel very self-conscious, but the message is more important than my self-consciousness. It really is. <clears throat> The message is louder than my fear, <laughs> the fear of, <laughs> of weirding people out. <laughs> this message is so much more important, it weighs so much more than you know, the fear of coming across door key or whatever. I'm a door, okay? it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It makes no difference to the world whether I'm a dork or not. <coughs> I'm a big fat mama. Big fat mama dork. <laughs> Bear mother. My message is very clear. You know, we have needs. Physical needs of love and touch. 
This is very, very important. Non-sexually. This is very important. True love has nothing to do with sex. Or pleasures or any kind of uh, gratification. True love is deep caring for another living being, including your own body. Yeah. You have to love your own bodies. It's very important. And it becomes very difficult when we have not received that love during infancy. And most people haven't. Most people have not received what they should have received. What was necessary for them, for their brains to be calm and, and, and not be under pressure or fear or something. Social fear and all of this. I'm nervous because I have not had that touch from my mother. But I've become intellectually very conscious about this. I've studied this my whole life in depth. That's why I studied psychology. Because I know that what people have been doing is very, very wrong, going in the very wrong direction. I've seen this already at, an, at a very early age. So my mission has always been very clear. This is the di direction that I'm going into. This is what I'm studying. This is what I'm finding out. And this is what also what I learned over and over and over again firsthand and through others and through books and through a lot of documentation. <coughs> Baba now come to me. <coughs> come to me my love. Come my love. Come my beautiful. Come my love come here. Come my love. See Baba dog he is sealing. He's getting a lot of love, and that's what he needs. That's what we all need. We need infinite love in form of words, gentle voices, loving voice. Lo it's the way you talk, your voice. That's so important. Sincere, honest, deeply caring, loving so infinitely important. The voice carries an energy and and the touch is infinitely important. To get a lot of gentle touch and hugs and love and, and Papa Dog sleeps with Paul in bed. In the winter time he always sleeps under the blanket with Paul. <coughs> right now it's very warm so he doesn't need to be covered right now because it's over 80 degrees. But, but he always gets touch. A lot of touch and many kisses. Kiss it, kiss it, kiss it, kiss it. A lot of kiss it. <laughs> So the sun is setting now and there are some very interesting clouds in the sky. <coughs> so, okay you guys take care, bye bye.